Hi, Edify family, Robert Mwanda here, and today I speak to you on the topic when prayer alone is enough. I know this is a very controversial statement, but I urge you to watch this video to the end before you make a decision to agree or disagree with me. Recently, the President of the Republic of Uganda gazetted two days as a response to the spiking cases of COVID-19 infections and deaths. The preacher at the prayer day said, prayer alone is not enough. A statement that attracted diverse reactions from the Ugandan public. Though well intentioned to encourage the masses to uphold the SOPs and uptake of vaccinations, this statement struck a wrong chord with many Christians. The preacher's statement actually watered down the very purpose of the call to prayer. Nations world over have actually called their citizens to prayer as a response to this pandemic. This is why today I have dedicated a complete episode to the subject of prayer. I know prayer is such a wide subject and certainly I will not exhaust what I would like to share in one episode. Nonetheless, I will share with you some keys to a growing lifestyle of prayer. But before that, I believe it's not enough to just share about prayer. We actually need to pray now, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our sin is ever before you. If we claim innocence, we lie and make you a liar. We have exchanged your glory for vain things and kindled your anger against us. We have trusted in man more than we have trusted in you, our God. We have put our trust in men who draw strength from mere flesh, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. For this reason, Lord, prosperity has eluded us. But today we beseech thee, Lord, to have mercy upon us and don't let your anger burn forever. We put our trust in you, Lord. Our confidence is in you. Plant us by the streams of life. Lord, you have searched our hearts, examined our minds, and found our anxious thoughts. From your glorious throne, exalted from the beginning, you have never ceased to reign. You, O oh Lord, you are our place of sanctuary. You are our strength and our fortress our refuge in time of distress. To you we come from this altar and from the ends of the earth and say, Father, revive and repair every damaged component of our bodies. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Save us and we shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Let your word be fulfilled in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Prayer is among the most powerful spiritual tools that a Christian can use in his journey toward the kingdom of God. No person can claim that they are a Christian without developing the habit of prayer. If you are a Christian who but depends on others for your prayer needs, then you are a baby Christian. I'm not saying that we are all sufficient and therefore need nobody to pray with us. However, being dependent on others, especially those we think of as prayer warriors or our men of God, can only incapacitate us. Prayer is such a powerful divine weapon that every Christian should be trained in using to win spiritual battles. There are several scriptures that attest to the power of prayer people from generations past prayed and changed destinies. They won battles, parted seas, brought back the dead, and much more. Here are some examples. By prayer, I mean by the power of prayer, in 1 Kings 17, 21 and 22, the widow of Zarephath received her dead son back to life. In John chapter 11, verse 41 and 44, by the power of prayer, the man Lazarus, buried four days in the grave, came out of the grave. In the book of James 5, 13 to 15, we know that the fervent prayer of a righteous man will heal the sick. 
by the power of prayer, nations and kings and commoners alike experience divine protection. By the power of prayer, barren women conceived. By the power of prayer, Elijah shut up the heavens that it did not rain for three and a half years. By the power of prayer, sin is forgiven. By the power of prayer, a man made the sun to stand still. That is in Joshua chapter 10. By the power of prayer, a man called fire down from heaven. We attain blessings through prayer. We obtain wisdom through prayer. Is there anything prayer can't do? I'm yet to find one. Prayer changes everything. Most importantly, prayer changes me and changes you. In prayer, we take the posture of humility. We acknowledge our weakness and accept God's power. We cease to depend on our ability and trust in God's ability. God will never step into situations where we are capable. In prayer, we set aside our capability and embrace God's ability. To experience this power of prayer first, you must believe in prayer. You also must believe that the one whom you pray answers prayer. Most importantly, you must believe the one who answers prayer. Jesus, in the Gospel of John 14, verse 13 to 14, said, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 6 and 7 and 9, he said, And when you pray, take note. He didn't say, not if you pray. But when you pray, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. Read it for yourself and you will see. To grow in prayer, there are four calls for developing certain habits. Here are five keys to developing the habit of prayer. Number one, pray fast before everything else. The psalmist in Psalm 5 verse 3 says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. Praying in the morning shows our priority in life. Before seeking things, earthly things, we need to seek God's kingdom first. And we can do that through prayer. Number two, pray at all times. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, Apostle Paul admonishes us to pray without ceasing. This doesn't mean you do nothing else but prayer. What it means is that everything else must be done after prayer. It only means that we should have a prayerful attitude. One of the hindrances to effective prayer is the attitude we carry into the prayer meeting or the prayer room. Number three, note down your prayer points. Pray as the Spirit leads is a common catchphrase in Christian prayer meetings nowadays. Praying as the Spirit leads is good, but sometimes it is better to write down your prayers. This does not only help you to set an atmosphere and attitude of prayer, but also to avoid distractions. Avoid untargeted prayer and disorganization. This is very useful since you refer back to what you prayed for. You are also able to take stock of answered prayer and those that need you to persist in prayer. Remember the story of King Hezekiah. When he received the letter of his enemy, he spread it before God and prayed for protection. Read about that in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 14 uh, to 19, and 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 7. Number four, avoid distractions. When we pray, we need to focus on God. We need to give our hundred percent attention to God. Distractions come in different forms. This may include our smartphones, our televisions, our books, uh, people around us, our attitude in prayer, and even slumber. 
If you really want to develop the habit of prayer, you need to eliminate all possible distractions. When you do that, you can concentrate more on God and your prayer. Number five, have a specific goal or target to develop a habit of prayer. For example, setting a specific month, day, and time for fervent prayer. This special time of prayer could be accompanied by fasting, journaling, and asking God to set you on a course of prayer that you would not achieve on your own. This can be at the beginning of the year or a marked season for you as an individual. Now here are some do's and don'ts of prayer. We don't pray to impress other people. Jesus warns us not to pray standing in synagogues and the corners of the streets that we may be seen by men. We do not use vain repetitions in prayer. Our prayers should be addressed to God the Father. This means that we don't pray to any dead saints and, and people. They are all dead and God is the only living God that we should pray to. Our prayers should start with praise to God and thanksgiving. This helps us to set our minds to the great privilege that we have to talk to the supreme ruler of the vast universe. We ought to have each other pray for God's kingdom to be established here on earth. This world desperately needs a savior and only Christ's second coming can bring the utopia we all have been dreaming of. That's why we must continually pray for God's kingdom to come and save this dying world once and for all. We need to ask for God's will to be done in our lives. God's will is perfect and as Christians, we need to constantly strive to know His will and to have the heart to obey Him. We pray for God's physical and spiritual blessings. We need to realize that God is the only true source of blessings and we are all dependent on Him. Ask for forgiveness of our sins. We are sinners and God's mercy is enough for us to be forgiven. However, we need to realize that there are conditions for God's forgiveness. Before we can earn God's forgiveness, we must forgive others. We need to pray for God's divine help to overcome sin. Let us not commit the mistake of believing that we can overcome sin by ourselves. We need God's help to overcome sin. We need to pray for God's protection. Our enemy, the devil, is so powerful and there is nothing in his mind but to destroy God's people. But as powerful as he is, he is powerless against God. And through prayer, we can be protected from his evil schemes. We need to end our prayer with praises again, acknowledging God that he alone has the power to grant our requests is vital. This enables us to develop the right attitude and mindset when praying. Again, I hope that you learn something from this episode on prayer and actually you start to pray because only prayer is enough. God bless you.